Hi, I'm Ben Sullivan and I'm the in-house vet for BCF Technology. Welcome to this series of videos on ultrasonography of the equine distal limb. The aim of these videos is not to make you into a, an ultrasound expert, um, but what, what we are a, aiming to achieve um, is to give you the uh, knowledge um, and the confidence to use an ultrasound machine to get good diagnostic quality images um, of the soft tissue structures of, of equine distal limbs. In particular, we're going to be focusing on the superficial and deep distal flexor tendons, the inferior check ligament or accessory ligament of the deep distal flexor tendon, and also the suspensory ligament. So that's the body of the suspensory ligament um, and also its branches. We will we'll also just have a quick look um, at the structures on the palmer and plantar pastern as well. We're going to be looking at at the forelimb mostly, um, but we will also do a, a section on the hind limb as well. Ultrasonography of, of the distal limb is, is really a, a useful, almost day one skill um, in equine practice. You'll use it on a regular basis. Um, and like, like with anything, practice obviously makes perfect. But if just you have a basic knowledge and a little bit of confidence of how to approach these cases, uh, then you'll find that even from the word go, uh, they're much more enjoyable and you get a much more rewarding result um, in the end. We're just going to take a, a look at a few things that you might need to consider uh, before you sort of embark on, on, on going out scanning uh, the horse's legs. Um, so we'll start with the facilities. Um, obviously, sometimes that's going to be dictated to you, the yard uh, you're going to, whatever. Um, but just a few things you want to bear in mind quickly uh, cover the machine setup and then also the, the horse setup if you like as well how we'll prepare the patient. Facilities, um, really the most important thing is a, a quiet environment, um, something that will keep the horse calm. Um, also a little bit of space because you are going to have to sort of get down close to them and you do want the space to, to move around and get out of the way if necessary and of course you've got an ultrasound machine in there with you which you don't want to damage um, <coughs> and, and ideally if it can be dimly lit then so much the better for seeing the, the, the screen on the ultrasound machine. If you've got stocks, you can use them, they're great. Uh, sometimes people don't like using them, but, but they are useful if they're there. Um, in terms of the ultrasound machine, probably you're gonna have two options. You either have a, a portable machine, a little bit like I've got here to my side, or depending on where you're working, you may have a, a larger hospital-based machine. Um, although there are differences in image quality, um, they, they all have some similar features and they can all, all achieve good results uh, with scanning uh, the legs um, and there are some features that you need to know about which, which will be uh, uniform in all machines. So really the most important things you need to know about are the gain control. The gain control it really affects the overall brightness of the image so it, it just simply makes the whole image either darker or lighter. Um, and, and it's, it's a sort of probably the most commonly used uh, setting to adjust so that we get the kind of picture we want. You also have a depth adjustment, so that means how deep into the tissues we are looking from the probe. Um, obviously scanning the, the tendons of the leg, that doesn't need to be very deep, probably five or six centimetres. We may also be able to adjust the frequency uh, of the probe. Modern probes often have a range of frequencies over which they can work. Typically, when we're scanning tendons, we want the highest frequency that the probe will achieve. That tends to give us the, the highest resolution. This comes at the cost of, of reduced depth of penetration into the tissue. But seeing as that, that we're only looking at maybe going five or six centimetres in, that usually isn't a problem. So generally, with modern probes, we'd be looking at something with a frequency of about 10 megahertz or higher. Um, not all machines have an adjustment on them, um, but if, it, if you have got one, it can help. The other thing is the time gain compensation, which is effectively like the gain. It's just, uh, it enables you to adjust the, the gain um, in different areas of the image. So right from the near field, close to the transducer and, and the surface of the skin, all the way down into the deepest tissue. Not all machines, again, have that, although most will at least have a near field and a far field gain, and that just enables you uh, to, to adjust things slightly separately. Sometimes you'll have presets loaded onto machines. So for example, this machine here has an equine tendon scanning preset, and that just really means that the image will be optimized for uh, tendons from the word go. You just press the button, um, and you usually then won't have to do too much adjustment. The most important thing is 
all machines are different, familiarize yourself with the one you're going to be using before you start. Um, there's a very useful video on our website already about how to optimize your image uh, and, and those controls are well explained. So the next thing uh, you need to consider is what type of probe you want to be using. And really for scanning tendons and, and the, the distal limb, you're gonna need a linear probe. So that's one that looks like this. Um, a nice flat, long surface. This enables you to get cross-sectional images and also um, it's very helpful for the longitudinal images when you're scanning along the length of the, the tendon fibers because it means that all of the tendon fibers are then parallel to the surface of the, of the transducer. If you've got a probe with a curved, a curved end to it, you'll find that makes those longitudinal images much harder. These probes also tend to be the highest resolution, so you give the best image quality of the tendons. That comes at the expense of depth of penetration, but really um, when you're dealing with the, with the distal limb, we're only needing to look maybe five or six centimetres down, um, which is well within the, the, the sort of uh, limit of these, these probes. So that's the kind of thing you need. Um, kind of going hand in hand with the probe, we've also got a standoff. Uh, some will look like this. Um, there are many different designs. Essentially, they're all, they're all the same thing. They're a gel block um, which fits over the end of the probe. And then that goes against the, against the horse's leg. It just means that you get improved contact. So uh, where you're trying to fit uh, a rigid flat surface against the curved one, the back of the horse's leg, you don't get very good contact at either end of the probe. You improve that by putting this on. The other thing to bear in mind is that um, not all ultrasound machines have an ability to adjust the depth of focus, so where the, the ultrasound beam gives the highest resolution image. Um, and by putting this on, you bring the probe away from the leg, so the more superficial structures um, are then uh, further away from the, the, the surface of the probe into the focal zone when otherwise they, they wouldn't have been able to, to, to be focused upon. When you're using a standoff, um, it's also important to remember that you need some uh, uh, contact, something to promote contact between the end of the probe and the inside of the standoff. So what we tend to do is get our ultrasound coupling gel, put a load of it into the standoff itself. You don't want too much, you don't want it all spilling out when you put the probe in there, but just enough to cover the bottom. Then you put the probe into the standoff, and then when you come to scan the horse's leg, there'll be gel on the horse's leg, but also you're gonna put a little bit of uh, gel onto the end of the um, standoff as well, just to keep the contact all the way from the end of the probe right through to the skin of the horse. So we have a, a continuous contact for those ultrasound waves.